Welcome back everybody to another episode of the House Podcast. I hope all of you watching this are doing great and it feels good to be able to film again and release more content for all of you and hopefully we get to continue to doing so. Uh, so today we're going to have the chance to talk with the new executive director of Britannia Woods Community House, aka The House. Unfortunately, Mohamed Sofa uh, is no longer with us, but as we all know him, he's up to something great and will always be around. So it is my honor today to introduce um, someone who's going to take over Mohamed Sofa and is going to bring uh, continue the work that he has done, We're also adding her own personal touch to it. And uh, so let me just introduce Faduma Yusuf. Thank you. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Good. Um, I'm doing good. Okay. Yeah. So can you just quickly just tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself a little bit to all the viewers? Okay. So I'm Faduma. Um, I grew up here, and I guess we'll talk about that a bit later. Yeah. Um, and I've lived in... Ottawa most of my life since we came to Canada. Um, I come from a family of five, six technically, six. Um, and that's really all I can say about myself right now. Okay. But well, I'm sure we'll get into more. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll get right into it. So grew up, growing up in Richa, as you mentioned, you grew up mm -hmm. here. So can you just tell us a little bit how you grew up, uh, how it was growing up in, in Richie and the difference between then and now? Or is there any similarities? So, I think about this a lot. This is a question that I always think about, actually. Uh, and it's shaped a lot of things I've done in my life so far. Um, grow up in, so, growing up in Richie, I think, was some of the most special times of my life. Um, it made me, you know, our neighbors and the families that I grew up with are still close to me. Um, and they're still around my life. Um, so that, I think, is the most special thing that I remember about Richie and I still see today. Um, growing up here, you know, we were newcomers. Um, I saw, you know, like my parents came here just like every other parent. They had hopes and dreams and opportunities. And now that I'm reflecting back, you know, and now that I'm on the other side of providing support and services to families, I know how hard it is for the, the parents especially. Um, so... Now I just have a different lens. Like I, I remember when I first started about literally a month ago. So I've only been in the job about a month and like eight days. I went for a walk with Mohammed, And one of the things that I was really thinking about is like, you know, I've had a lot of great times here, but I've also had uh, painful times. I'm like, am I going to remember? Am I going to see it like that? Right. Like I've worked in other um, communities that are very similar, but it, this is home. But when I was walking with Mohammed, I really saw it from a different lens. Um, but what remains the same is the people, um, the families. Because we are a family community, we're always going to have a lot of kids. We're always going to have parents who either are newcomers or are not newcomers and are just trying to have the best opportunities in life for their kids. So that's, that has remained the same. And after talking to a lot of the staff who have been working here and even Mohammed, I still see that neighborly, that taking care of each other, that I I think it exists in other communities, but, like, I really see it mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then growing up, honestly, like, one of the things I really, really reflect on, and I'm so happy to be back on this side of the city, is how beautiful this side of the city is. So from the beach to the parks, yeah. it really allows us to do really great programming outside, which is the reality this year. Mm -hmm. um, but just how beautiful it is and how old the trees are. Um, and how like just it, it's a nice place to to to, to grow up um, I like I loved riding my bikes around here there's so many different trails and stuff like that um, yeah okay okay so you mentioned yeah so you've grown up in Richie the this uh, the setting here is very great and so what has been um, your most memorable memories growing up here in Richie the most memorable memory one of the most so a lot of it is tied to, um, so 
my relationship with the community house isn't as, um, how do I say it? Like, I didn't come to every single program, mm-hmm. but I always came to summer programs. Yeah. Um, and, and that's mainly because as a, like, we have a different reality when it comes to girls and from specific backgrounds and cultures. You know, I had a lot of responsibilities at home. So when I would go to school, I would come home and I'd have things to do. Mm-hmm. But during the summer, like, I have a lot of free time. Yeah. So I think I was thinking about this question because a lot of the different things I was able to do and have those experiences in my life, I don't think would be possible had the community house not been here. Mm-hmm. So from swimming to playing tennis to just having really nice summers. So those memories I still think about. Um, and then... I think also just being able to walk around the community with my friends. Mm. Um, I, I'm still friends with the same group of women that I... Yeah. Well, now we're all women. But the, the same group of girls that I, I lived here with. Um, and I think those friendships really are my most memorable. Um, so, so those are the happy mm-hmm. memories. Mm. And then I have some not-so-happy memories that still stick with me. Um, from things that have happened in the community to, um, I think just the, a lot of the advocacy and the work that we had to do to get certain things done, mm-hmm. which still exists today. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, both. Both, okay, okay. Both. Yeah, we've certainly had a lot of, um, a lot of things happen to the community. Mm-hmm. From then till now, it's, it still has the same atmosphere from, yeah. from when I grew up to even now. Mm-hmm. Arishi is still the same, and uh, and that's a good thing. As also, so it's a little also bad thing because we're still victim of our daily. Uh, how can I say this? Daily things that happen in our communities or that happen to every community across Ottawa, and just, I think it's stressful. It's important to stress that it's not just Richie. Yep. It happens in every community. Every community has connections, but it's just it's just that there's just something great about us being part of Richie as well. And just we've seen the good things that came out of Richie. You know, yeah. the good people that come out of Richie, and you're yep. you're one of one of them, you know. And so, let's just move on to career-wise. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the path you chose out of Richie. Because uh, as much as we love Richie, uh, sometimes we also have to walk our own path. Mm-hmm. But one thing I find myself is always coming back to, to give back to the community. Yeah. So, can you just touch a little bit about, like, the path that you chose out of Richie? So, um, I studied, I have a degree from the University of Ottawa, Public Administration and the Social Sciences of Health. Okay. And the reason why I chose that, I was really reflecting on this. Um, so when I was ready to graduate, I was really thinking, like, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? And then I've always been someone who, I'm more vocal now, but before I would think about a lot of things, and then I wouldn't express my points of view. But I always thought that, like, I have a story to tell, and, I have, and I've experienced quite a lot from, you know, um, seeing, um, seeing my parents kind of try to make it in yeah. this country, in this community. Um, and then seeing all the roadblocks, um, and all the roadblocks being a lot of the laws and the policies and the procedures that exist in our country. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to be able to shape that. I wanted to be able to say, can we do things better? Yeah. Can we change it? And I thought that was government. So I studied public administration thinking like, you know, we can um, influence government. Okay. So my degree was really focused on understanding how the Canadian government works, understanding how laws are made into policies and rules and regulations, mm-hmm. And then when I started to study that, I started to see how oppressive they were. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about, and a lot of our parents come from so many different countries, and it's a land of opportunity, right? And um, just for, an, like, as an example, my father was a trained pharmacist, and he came here with lots of education. And he's an example of so many other fathers and mothers. Mm-hmm. But our ways of re- recognizing credentials are so bad. Yeah. And I feel like maybe now we might, we, we, like, we might see some changes, but I'm still not super hopeful. But those are explicit um, things set up by the Canadian government to do that to people. So instead of, like, being an agent of the government, I started to really think about, like, how can I, how can we influence the outside? So I was really interested in more community-based interventions. Like, how can we empower the community to influence this? Um, so that's why I added on the social sciences of health because the other factor to all this is like one thing I was really seeing and I'm seeing more in my career is like, you know, people see issues in community, but I see people who have, um, like I see people who have poor health outcomes because of how we're living, whether it's through school, whether it's our settlement through immigration, whether it's 
um, seeking a job, all of it impacts our health. So I wanted to know that a bit more. Um, so my career out of Ritchie was always to come back and not fix things because mm-hmm. I don't think we can ever, I think people can empower themselves and fix things, but um, work with communities like Ritchie or work on issues that impact communities like Ritchie and try to change that. Um, so I wanted to always remain connected somehow. Um, and I never thought I would come back and actually work in the community. Okay. So I was working in community health centers for a bit. And I was working for some, some amazing community health centers in our city. And when this opportunity came, I thought to myself, like, I want to be able to take all of that knowledge and build on what Mohammed and the staff and you guys have built on and, like, try to, I, as you said, like, put my different spin on it. Um, but... I, like, I, I thought, like, I think university and college are really important because, um, and it's not the only way to make success in life, mm-hmm. um, and if you define success as money, but I really think it's, like, education is more for yourself, too, to really start to see the society differently, to start to educate your own self, and then, you know, making sure that you're setting yourself up and your family up for success. Mm-hmm in a different way, including stability in, in, in money, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. um, that's uh, all I have so far. <laughs> okay. So, uh, upon studying, you realize that you didn't really want to end up in a government job. as that's, that's the common knowledge for every parents that come here with the kids or that new immigrant parents be like, oh, work for the government and get yourself a good job, get the pension, get all the benefits that they give you. Yeah, this is great, but the reality of it is that <clears throat> no matter even if we work for the government, we can still, we, we can really affect change. And the system is always going to be against us regardless of how high we go up uh, in the government as well. And so you decide to come back. This is one of the things that, reason why, that brought you back to Richie is that you wanted to give back to the community, take the knowledge that you've gained and also impact uh, the community as well. So what, uh, what, hope, what are your hopes for our community and where do you want it to go? Which direction do you want it to go? So, okay, I'm going to answer that question. But I really, because I don't think working for government is a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great thing to do. Um, I just think you have to be critical yeah. of certain things. And sometimes that critical way of thinking may not um, be accepted right now in the public service. Mm-hmm. But it's awesome. I think we need more of us working in government to really be present and to affect change. Um, and I think the government needs to do things differently, whether it's recruitment, whether it's how they understand um, social policy, who they listen to. Mm-hmm. And I really think it's this generation that tells stories differently, that um, doesn't really take for granted um, the fact that they need to speak up, because like we do, like we really, really do need to speak up. So I'm hoping that things change, and um, and I also think the government needs to recruit differently. Like they need to employ people like. You, like me, like mm-hmm. those of us who come from these communities in influential places. Yeah. Um, but you're right, that typical thing. And it's also, it's the biggest employer in this city. Mm-hmm. And we have a problem when the biggest employer in the city doesn't reflect the people. Um, so, you know, that's something that I hope changes. So I do encourage people to go into mm-hmm. government. And if I might add, I think with the whole thing that's going on, I think right now is the time for us to actually have a foot in the door. Mm-hmm. And potentially, hopefully, also affect some changes as well, too. I think we need to demand it. Mm-hmm. I think we need to demand it. I know there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of change makers who are black, uh, who are racialized, who are public servants, who are really pushing that from the inside. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's still systemic things that are, for some reason, stopping amazing talent mm-hmm. from delivering great public service to our nation. Mm-hmm. But... I think we need to demand it. And, you know, um, that's the other thing is like growing up and not having enough networks and people and connections. You know, Mohammed is like a connector for a lot of different people. Um, But, you know, we need like hundreds, hundreds of Mohammeds Mm -hmm. to really, you know, make more change and to uh, benefit from the privileges that other communities benefit from. Um, So that was just one thing I wanted to clarify. I think pensions are very important. (laughs) You know, our parents didn't have pensions. Mm-hmm. I mean, some do, some 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 didn't. Health benefits are so important. But that also, like, makes me think about, like, why is it only one sector of the economy that's so stable? Like, we have to start to question, what about all the other sectors? What about mm-hmm. the creative sector? What about, 
What about all the other jobs that most of us are overrepresented in? You know, we have a problem in this country that we don't have good paying jobs that have great benefits. Mm -hmm. And that for me is a problem. Um, so I don't know where I, I went on a, on a, on a tangent. That, that, so but what was your other? The, so the follow up was uh, what the host for the community and where you see going. Okay. So I think we're in very, uh, like, we're in very difficult times right now. Um, there's the pandemic. Mm -hmm. There's also a lot of the protests and the, you know, um, the protests against police brutality and oppression in general and racism and specifically anti-black racism. The, I think the main hope that I can have now is that um, we don't forget the reasons why we're protesting in a few months from now. Okay. And, you know... <clears throat> I think for the, like the hope for the community is that the communities that are most impacted by these issues are not forgotten about mm -hmm. by those of us who are protesting and those of us who are um, making influential decisions on behalf of our community. Um, and then in general, I think that like the hope for my, for for all the communities, but also specifically for Britannia Woods, is that every child and every single person who lives here has the things they need to reach the successes that they want mm -hmm. for themselves. And if we as a community house can be a part of that, that's a blessing, that's amazing, and that's really the reason why we exist. Mm -hmm. uh, but my hope is like every single child, every single youth, every single mother, father, has the things they need around them to reach their ultimate potential. Mm -hmm. And you know, yes, that's money, yes, that's a great salary, yes, that's that, but what about peace of mind? What about just good mental health? What about just access to all the amazing food you need to eat to to uh, be great. I think that's my hope. Um, I've started to see that poverty is not an individual thing. It's a collective thing that we've all created. So knowing that, um, rising above poverty and making it out of Richie, I'm realizing how hard it is. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that the community voice can always be listened to to, to dismantle that. Um, and... Yeah, I think that's my hope. And then there's, you know, the practical hopes. Like, I, like I'm like i hoping that we have better... Like, I was walking around the community, and one thing that I was really uh, astonished by was it doesn't look the same, like, physically. Mm -hmm. um, there's certain places where I'm like, there's so many pot, like, there's so many holes that I didn't see before. There's homes that, you know, shouldn't be in the state that they're in. Um, and there's certain maintenance things that are not necessarily being addressed. And I know the, like, the moms have been speaking up, mm -hmm. the community has been speaking up. I know there was a group of youth who wanted to talk about the pest issue, like the cockroach issue. And that for me is, you know, I'm hoping that we can work really well with our partners to address some of these things. Mm -hmm. um, just to make a like to to make it a better living condition, if, if that makes sense. Mm, so I have I have a lot of different hopes. Um, and I also hope to, like, uh, just build on the amazing creativity that I already see happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can also add on to that. I feel like the hope for communities for community to get better in all aspects. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to be left out, as usually is the case. And we don't want to be uh, pushed to the edge as well, too. And so, just something on, on a little lighter note as well, too. So, Mohamed Sofa was previously, previously uh, in, in your position. Mm -hmm. And now you came and you, you've replaced him. And then, so, how do you feel about so far leaving? Well, that's a huge, uh, that's huge. Um, I feel very nervous, mm -hmm. but I don't think, I think if you've been working here for a very long time, I don't think he can um, ever really leave, leave. Yeah. Um, but he has left. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he's in a great role, and I'm hoping he comes back with to you guys and then maybe explains his, um, his, his new role in the city, because it's, it's a great thing for a lot of our communities and a lot of our kids. Um, I feel very nervous to be taking over Britannia Woods, to be honest. Um, I think you guys have done amazing things over the last few years, and I haven't been working directly in the community. Um, I feel nervous because Mohammed is... Like, now that I'm seeing a lot of the behind-the-scenes things, I'm like, this, is, this, this, this takes time and dedication. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, I don't mess up. <laughs> That's one of my main things. Um, but also uh, that, you know, I get to build my own chapter mm -hmm. on what Britannia Woods Community House does. 
um, with the staff, you know, we, we've got amazing staff um, who, who also have a lot of creativity and a lot of knowledge. Um, but I think the, com- like, and it's such a weird time, right, to yeah. be leaving and then to be coming in because mm-hmm. of the pandemic. In a typical world, we would be celebrating Mohammed, And I know we, like, we had a virtual goodbye for him as well. But I know the community is going to miss him a lot. Um, and I'm hoping we can, like, have a really nice celebration for him because I feel like everyone deserves, like, a, like a nice wrap-up. And it's good for the community. Um, yeah, but, you know, I really don't think he's going to be gone from a lot of people's lives. You know, and, and, and that's actually a trend for Britannia Woods. Like, even before Mohammed, we had another executive director, Beth, and she's still around. Um, it leaves something in you that you just want to, like, say, hey, I, I invested time in this. You know, I invested time in, in, in a lot of the kids and a lot of the families, and I just want to see it move. Um, so, yeah, I have a lot of hope for, the, for what I'm able to do, um, but I know I have a lot of responsibility, too. And uh, also, I think it's also important to add, yes, Mohammed, although he's no longer in the position that he was in before, but he's still around. He always comes back to the community. And we always see him, always in contact with him. But I think also, one of the things that we, it's all, we have, as a community, we also have to give you credit, right? Because I know what the work that Mohammed has done, done is a lot. And for you to, to be able to, to take that on is very, like, it's, it's wonderful. You know, to have someone who's equally great as Mohammed was, you know, to come back, to come on his, in his position, actually take over and move the community forward is something that we've all wanted, you know, because I know there was, like, little issues around, oh, who's going to replace him, how we're going to go, because it was a big figure in the community. And, uh, and now, like, I'm proud to say that having you around, because I've interacted with you here and there, and I know you're, you're a very cool person. And I think I, I can speak for the community, for those who've met you, that I can say that, you know, we're very proud to have you. And it's very... <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's very great to have someone who's knowledgeable as you, who has that much experience, also come out and contribute to the community. And I think, <clears throat> I think it's going to go well. I mean, you have, enough, you, have, you have nothing to worry about. As you know the community, you know the community very well. You grew up here. You came back, you volunteered, you came back, you did all this. You walked around your first month, first couple of weeks of you taking a position. You know how the community is, and the community already knows you, right? So you have you, your roots are in the community, and you, there's, no, there's no way you can take those roots away. And that's, you know, uh, I mean, thank you for saying that, but, uh, you know, and the connections that you have with people when you're doing this kind of work in community work, community development, the connections and the trust that you have to build is the most important thing. Um, you can mess up a lot of things, but if you mess up the ability for you to have trust in the community and, uh, you know, just connecting with people, I don't know if you can do your job very well. Um, and honestly, the people really inspire, like people really, truly inspire me. Like I was an introvert growing up. I was really quiet. Um, and I kept a lot of things to myself, but my job and my work, like work has forced me to open up. Um, and I realized there's a, we all like we, we all have a voice and we all have to speak. And I also realize there's a lot of voiceless people in our community. And those of us who are able to speak and have platforms and create things, we have a responsibility yeah. to say something. Um, and sometimes I can feel myself in like meetings or like situations where I'm like eh, like hold that anger, yeah. hold it and like say it in a way that people will understand it. Um, because when I see the kids, when I see even you guys, I th- like I think of my brothers. I think of um, I think of like my father. I think of my family, and and I'm like you. You know, there's those of us who like had to deal with so much that we had to just keep it in to survive, and they can't really speak. And you know, for them to be okay, they just have to keep that in. But then there's those of us who are witnessing all of this, and then there's people above me who are more powerful than me who who are witnessing all of this. So we have to speak. Like we have to do something. So I know I'm in the right kind of job when like. I have that feeling yeah. because if you didn't have that feeling, if you didn't have that connection, I really think you need to think about why you're doing community work. Um, so yeah. it gives me a lot of purpose in my life. Like if I can, if I can take my life experiences and kind of like let that fuel me, then I feel like it, it's a good thing, right? Yeah. And um, we know you're the right person for this because you have that feeling. Yeah. You know, if the person did not have that feeling, then they wouldn't be the right person for this position. And so for you having this feeling, then it's definitely it's definite that you're the right person for this. And so that brings us to our last part of the of our talk, which is if you have any last words or last uh, piece of advice, word of wisdom that you want to give to every viewers. Hmm. I think everyone has a talent and a skill 
that can be harnessed for great change. Um, it's not just those of us who are uh, vocal or what, like whatever you want to call it. I think everyone has something that they contribute to ultimate change in our society. Um, and I think for the youth specifically, um, I think you always have to remain hopeful. You have to remain hopeful. You um, Success is not defined by money. I think our society defines success as money, but your worth as a human being is not tied to how much money you can make and how many things you can produce. It's tied to how well you feel when you're most alone and you're most, you know, just on your own. Um, so that's like, that's one thing that I really, really want people to understand is like, but my, our role as community support is to see you ultimately succeed and, you know, get every opportunity that you can in life. But I've met enough people to understand that even when you do have all those great things, you may not be happy or successful. So I just hope that like people understand to remain hopeful that things will change for you and that success is more than money. And you know what? Before you get all that money, there's so many other things that you can start to work on yourself. And, um, and also to just... Um, to always just speak the truth, like be like be, like bear witness. There's so many just just bear witness. Like whatever you see, the way you see it is truth. So just speak up, and you know we really like I really want to get that message across. You know we talk to parents all the time to like speak up, but I really want more youth and more kids to speak up. Like whatever it is that you're going through, it, it, whether it's injustice, whether it's um things that you just don't feel like are right we like we need people to speak up outside of the community house and outside of uh um those of us who are doing the community work because the more people speak up like even today um you know a few of you are going to the march and there was a protest that is so powerful in its own way and it allows us to do the work too um so i like i just that is super important to me and civic engagement like we, we have to be present it doesn't matter how old you are, when you are in the room, people remember your life and who you are and, and what you represent. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I couldn't agree more with you on that. And uh, also, I think it's also important, like you mentioned, you know, to speak up, speak the truth, engage in everything that you, that you, that you believe in, you know, and uh, just go out there and attack. And so I just want to say thank you for, for your time. Thank you thank for, you. Thank for you the for chat. Me. It was good. Um, um, so yeah, so everybody, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for tuning in. As always, I'm your host, Peja, and this is a house podcast for us by us. <laughs>